and worship the King of glory. Just give him all the praise and the worship and the adoration. Lift up your voice, open your mouth, begin to exalt his holy name. Our God is worthy to be praised, is worthy to be worshipped, is worthy to be adored, is worthy to be glorified. There is no one that is like you, that they will bless you, that they will worship you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's have the book of Psalms, Psalm 25, put it verse 1 and verse 2 on the screen. That scripture says, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. That scripture is actually a song. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God. somebody's song this morning you have been waiting for a long time and it's looking like as if the night is coming and you're not getting answer to the prayer you have been praying for a long time but you can sing that song one more time on to the Lord do I lift up my soul way you can. Oh my God, I trust in you. I trust in you over this, my daughter. I trust in you over my son. I trust in you over my health. I trust in you over my finances. I trust in you over my womb. I trust in you over my child. I trust in you over my job, over my career. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Holy Spirit, I trust in you. Daddy, my trust is in you. I put all my trust in you, Lord. I put all my trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies, let them not triumph over me. Oh, Daddy, let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph. Father, this morning, I thank you that you have given me a word to those who have been waiting long for one thing or the other. I pray that as your word will come to everyone waiting on you for a long time, that today you will wipe away their tears, you will take away their pains, you will answer their requests, you will bring joy to their hearts, in the name of Jesus. Daddy, this month is the ninth month. It doesn't matter how long people might have been waiting for one thing or the other. This is the month of delivery. This is the month of bringing forth. This is the month of delivering that which people have been waiting for. I pray, oh Lord, every long
long wait will be satisfied this month in the name of Jesus. The best will be given to you. Thank you, blessed Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please be seated in God's presence. Those who are watching from their homes, from every part of the world, we want to welcome you to today's service. I'm going to be talking to you this morning, the first Sunday in the ninth month, on what I tie to God's best for waiting long. God's best for waiting long. If you are waited long, I want to let you know you will not just take anything shoddy. The best of God, not the best of man, the best of God will be your portion in the name of Jesus. In the book of Luke in chapter 5, when you read between verse 1 and 8, we just ended the prophetic gathering at thy word. And this was our theme scripture. But we see something there from verse 1. It says, and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret, verse 2. And the Bible says, and saw two sheep standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them, and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would trust out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Verse 4. Now when he had left speaking, the Bible says, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answered, he said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fish, and their nets broke. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. There is going to be a testimony coming to you that will make you to fall down in worship of the Most High. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says in the first few verses of that scripture that Jesus saw two boats by the seaside and he saw the fishermen in verse 2 washing their nets and they were outside the boat. And the Bible makes us to understand he walked to one of the boats, entered into it, preached from it to the people and then told them to throw their net onto the other side or to the deep side and the Bible said they caught so much fish that the net was breaking. For the first time, Peter had to invite the other people in the other boat to come and help them with the abundance that had come to them. And Peter said to Jesus, we toiled all night. Now, a night can be different from person to person. A night with somebody may be a year. A night with another may be 12 months. A night with another may be 6 years, 7 years. But I want to let you know, we pay me a deal for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Have you heard people say to you before that God makes everything beautiful in his own time? In fact, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11, have you heard people say to you before, God's time is the best? And they are just encouraging you and telling you not to lose heart. Do you know that it's only the person who is waiting long for something that knows the pain of waiting? Have you been trusting God for your immigration documents to be released and you are waiting month after month, year after year? I know when I was waiting together with my wife and we sit down in the living room doing nothing, just sitting down looking at each other's face and waiting for the mailman day after day. What are you waiting for and you have been waiting long? I want to assure you that this month, the most high will satisfy your longing soul. In the book of Psalm, in Psalm 130, the Bible says between verse 5 and verse 6, it says, I wait for the Lord, my soul doth wait. And in his word do I hope. 
He said, my soul waited for the Lord more than they that watch for the money. I say more than they that watch for the money. Many times you talk about waiting just a night and you are watching for the morning. And in your mind you are thinking the night and the morning is just 12 hours. In very soon 12 hours should be over. I remember years ago I had a toothache started in the night. And there was nowhere I could go to a dentist. It, the pain was so excruciating that I wish that morning could be made shorter. What I mean is I wish the night could be made shorter so that morning can come in time. I, I couldn't sleep. I was watching the clock. Every minute seemed like a long, long day. Eventually, it was 6 a.m., it was 7 a.m. I was the first person at the dentist's house. I don't know what it is that is the pain you are going through. And you have been waiting, hoping that money will come. I want to assure you this month, weeping that has endured will be terminated. Your morning of joy has come in the name of Jesus. In the book of Psalms, Psalm 123, the Bible says in verse 3, it says, as the eyes of the servant look to the hand of his master, and as the eyes of the maiden look unto the hand of the mistress, he says, so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God until the day, until, the, 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 until that he have mercy upon us. I pray in the name of Jesus that as you are waiting to receive something, looking at the hand of the Most High, you will not be disappointed in the name of Jesus. I say you will not be disappointed in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in the book of James, when you read in chapter 5, between verse 7 and verse 8, it says, wait like a farmer. And how does a farmer wait? The Bible says in that scripture, it says, see how the farmer waits in the NIV. For the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and the spring rain. The Bible tells us in King James, he waits for the former rain and the latter rain to fall. He waits patiently. Now the farmer puts something in the ground and he's right from the moment he puts it in the ground, his expectation is harvest. But he can't go to harvest immediately. He has to wait. He has to wait months, days, weeks. He has to allow the first rain and the former rain and the latter rain to fall on it so that the harvest will be big. What I'm simply saying is when the farmer is waiting, his waiting is because he knows at the end of the day what he has planted will get bigger. Or was sometime when I was a lot younger and I would go with my father to the farm and every time we plant something, as little children, we hardly can wait. We want to see what's happening. We realize many times we damage the harvest because we have gone to remove the tuber before it is harvest time. I want to encourage somebody. You think you are waiting long. You think your waiting is a, is a waste. I want to assure you, your waiting is not a waste. It's not in vain. That which you are waiting for is only growing bigger. At the harvest time, there shall be a bigger harvest. That is why I said the best of God for those who are waiting long. It means the longer you wait, the bigger your harvest. And I want you to let you know that no matter how long you have been waiting, there is the best of God. Let your expectation be for the best. You won't get the ordinary. You are going to get the best of best. Now, some are hearing me today that they are waiting on God for healing. And they have been waiting long for healing. When you read in the book of John, in chapter 5, the Bible tells us about the man by the pool of Bethesda. And the Bible says, when you read between verse 1 and verse 9, it says, when Jesus saw and he knew that the man had been in that place for a long time, verse 6, when he saw and knew that the man had been in that place for a long time, he said to the man, what did he say? Will thou be made whole? Everyone who is in one infirmity or the other, and you have been going to the place of healing, from hospital to hospital, expecting healing, and Jesus now sees, despite your effort, you are still not getting well, and knows you have been in that sickness for a long time, I assure you, the best of God's healing shall be your portion. 
Oh, what were they waiting for? They were waiting in that place for the steering of the water because the angel came to steer the water. Whoever enters that water first was the one who got healed. Anyone who didn't enter first will have to wait for the next time the angel will come. But Jesus came so that this man had been there for 38 years and said to the man, will that be made whole? He was telling a story, but heaven had made up their mind that that man must be released from that sickness that day. There is somebody hearing me. Heaven has made up his mind. That sickness is taken away. Jesus said to the man, carry your bed and walk. And the Bible says in verse 9, immediately the man was made whole and he took his bed. There is somebody hearing me. You will not only be healed, you will be made whole. When you read in Luke chapter 13, in verse 10 to verse 16, the Bible tells us the same thing about a woman who was in the temple for 18 years. This Bible says that that woman was bent low for 18 years. And Jesus came into the temple and seeing the woman, knowing she had been in that situation for a long time, you know what she said to the woman in verse 12, and when Jesus saw her, he called out and said, woman, you are loose from this infirmity. From today, I declare over somebody, whatsoever is the infirmity that tied you down, you have been waiting long for healing. I said, you are loose from that infirmity in the name of Jesus. There are about three or four points I want to make in today's message. The first point I want you to please hold in your hand is waiting long to provoke divine visitation. Anyone who is waiting long, you are an invitation to God. Because God does not want to see his children continue to wait in pain. It doesn't matter what you are waiting long in. Is it concerning your finances, concerning marriage, concerning having children, concerning healing, concerning deliverance? God sees your situation and he will come. Jesus came to the boat of Peter because he saw Peter toiling long all night. Jesus came to this woman who had been bent low for 18 years and Jesus set her free. Jesus also came to the man who was by the pool of Bethesda 38 years because he had been there a long time. The only qualification that man had was he had been there a long time. How long have you been in your situation? You are a candidate for divine visitation. Heaven is visiting you today in the name of Jesus. Somebody shared a testimony with me a few days ago. And the person said that long ago, she used to have a blemish, a mark on the body, which was something that was embarrassing, which was something that somehow she did everything she could, but the thing didn't go. And somehow, when she moved from Nigeria and came to America, somehow the thing vanished. She didn't know when it vanished. And the person said, maybe it is the food I am eating. Maybe it is the change of diet. I want to let that person know, it's not your change of diet. It is God who visited you when you didn't realize he had visited. Took away that growth. Took away that blemish. Took away that shame. Oh my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies trust triumph over me. There is somebody hearing me. Every satanic growth, every evil growth, every sickness on your body that is bringing you shame and reproach, we declare that there shall be a visitation of God. That shame is taken away. Do you know, I know why your amen is there like that. Only those who are waiting for healing know the pain of waiting. Do you know some women wear turtle neck not because they are cold, but because there are things that they can't allow you to see. And they are saying, oh God, when will you take away this pain? When will you take away this shame? There is somebody hearing me today. By the mercy of the living God, whatsoever is the shame and reproach that of, your, of, your, of your health, the most high is taking it away today in the name of Jesus. When God visits, he will do surgery. You know, the Bible says God used to come to visit Adam in the cool of the evening. But during one of Adam's visits, God decided to make Adam to sleep. And the Bible says God did surgery and took a rib out of Adam. By the time Adam woke up, a woman had been formed. He didn't know when it happened. 
I am simply saying to somebody, in your sleep, God will visit you. That sickness will be taken away. That problem will be taken away. That challenge will be taken away. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. Now, there was a man who was by the gate called Beautiful. And that man was born lame, even from his mother's house. And the Bible makes us to understand that the apostle Peter and, and John, they visited him at the hour of prayer. After that visitation, the man's story changed. Suddenly, the man who had been lame for 40 years, waiting long at the gate called Beautiful for a miracle, on one day, in one day, that miracle came and the problem of 40 years disappeared. Acts chapter 3, when you read between verse 2 and verse 9, I don't know what you are waiting long for. There shall be a visitation, a divine visitation in the name of Jesus. There are some people waiting long for deliverance because there has been an affliction from the pit of hell. In Luke chapter 8, when you read between verse 26 and verse 39, the Bible tells us the story of the madman of Gadara, and the Bible says he waited long. Bible tells us that he was he besieged by devils for a long time. For how long? A long time. I pray today, we had devils that troubled you for a long time. By the mercy of the living God, heaven is delivering you in the name of Jesus. Heaven is delivering you. And the Bible says the man worshipped. Do you know what it took Jesus to go to where that man was? The Bible says Jesus crossed over a storm. There was an opposition. The wind was contrary. But he had to reach that man. Do you know in Gadara, Jesus did not heal two people. It was only this man that was delivered. I don't know who is hearing me. If it is only you that needs deliverance from demonic old, Jehovah will cross rivers, we cross oceans to bring you deliverance today in the name of Jesus. Today. And why did God cross over such a lengthy journey to make sure that this man had deliverance? It's because the best of God always come when God visits. And you have been waiting for long. I announce to you the best of God will be yours in the name of Jesus. There are some that are waiting long under the oppression of witchcraft. And I'll give you an example from the Bible. The Bible says in Acts chapter 8, when you read in verse 5 to verse 13, that Philip went to Samaria, preached Christ unto them, and there was great joy in the city, in verse 8. But the Bible tells us in verse 9 that there was a certain man called Simon who had before time bewitched the city with witchcraft, given that he was a, he was a very important person. And the people gave heed, they obeyed him. Look at verse 11, verse 11. The Bible says, and to him they had regard because that for a long time he had bewitched them with sorcery. I don't care how long witchcraft had oppressed you. I don't care how long witchcraft had dealt with you in your family, in your lineage, in your ancestral line. A day comes that God will visit when God was going to visit Samaria, he sent one of his disciples, Philip, even to go to that city. And when Philip preached Christ unto them, Samaria was delivered. Do you know how? Because the one who used sorcery, who used witchcraft to hold the city, he also surrendered his life to Jesus. And when the witch that is behind your matter has surrendered to Jesus, then the power is gone. So I said to people, don't pray that your enemy will die. Pray that they will surrender. And I'm believing God this morning by the mercy of the living God. Whatsoever you have suffered for a long time, whosoever is behind that matter will surrender to Jesus completely today in the name of Jesus. I said to somebody, your precious will surrender. If you believe it, say better, amen. Now there are some people who have waited long for fruitfulness. Waited long for a long time. I went through the Bible, there are so many people who waited long. But I picked three examples. Sarah waited long for fruitfulness. Zechariah waited long for fruitfulness. Zechariah and Elizabeth, Abraham and Sarah, they were already in their 90s before help come. 
The Shunammite woman waited long for fruitfulness. She might not have been as old as 90, but she had passed what they call menopause. Thank God it's menopause, it's not menostop. Because anything that says pause, it means it can continue. And the Bible makes us to understand when Sarah had waited long, God visited her before her waiting was satisfied. When Zechariah had waited long, the angel of the Lord visited him before their waiting was satisfied. When the Shunammite woman had waited long, somehow, by just providence, the prophet of God visited their house, slept there before a story changed. It seems to me that when you are waited long, all you need is a divine visitation. All you need is a divine visitation. Either by God himself or by the angel of God or by the prophet of God, his servant. And the Bible says, when God visited these people and announced to them that their, their waiting is over, you know, they have waited so long, they have been used to waiting. That when they told them that their answers to prayer has come, they couldn't believe it. Look at what Sarah said in Genesis 18, between verse 9 and verse 14. The Bible says, Sarah laughed when God said, at this time next year, you will have a son. And God said, why did Sarah laugh? Is anything too hard for God to do? He said, I'm the God of all flesh. There is nothing too hard for me to do. Jeremiah 32, when you read in verse 27. People of God, when God visited even the house of, of, the house of Zechariah, the Bible says Zechariah didn't believe it. He didn't believe it. You know what happened? God, through the mouth of the angel, said to Zechariah, because you did not believe this, he said you will be dumb until this child is born. Luke chapter 1, when you read between verse 7 and verse 13. There is somebody hearing me today. All you need to bring an end to your long wait is to believe what he said to you. Oh, you know when the prophet visited the house of the Shunammite woman and the prophet said to the woman, at this time next year, you will embrace a son. In 2 Kings chapter 4, between verse 14 and verse 17, you know the response of the woman? He said, man of God, don't lie to me. Don't lie. Don't get used to waiting long. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I am here to let somebody know Whatsoever it is that had kept you waiting, waiting for fruitfulness, waiting for your harvest, waiting for your promotion, waiting for your healing, there's always a day that healing will come and the story will change. A few days ago, I, I, I sat down and I took stock of my life. And I came to a point where I said, God is not a liar. God is faithful. I remember... When I started as a pastor, we started in a village. And I remember those days that my wife, pregnant and with a little child, will climb the motorbike to travel from point to point. And I will do a prayer walk to church. I call it prayer walk. You know why we have to do prayer walk? Because all the cars are grounded. I started in that village like that. And I remember when my daughter will come and say, oh, daddy, the, 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 the motorbike, and she'll be showing me the wound she got from climbing the motorbike as a result of the bond by the silencer of the motorbike. And for months, that wound was there, didn't heal. But I look at that girl today, and she said, Daddy, I want to buy a car. And I'm telling myself, God, you are faithful. What is my point? My point is simple. You may wait for a long time, but at the end you will see that God can wipe away the memory of pain. Today I look at my life and it looks like I never went through that situation. I, can you imagine that this pastor, at a time, his wife and his family, we are moving from point to point with motorbike? I remember one day on the motorbike in Portacot River State, and I was on the bike and the rain was falling. And I said, oh God, oh God, is this the reward of service? And I heard God speak to me on that motorbike when it was raining. And God said, don't complain. Be grateful that you have service or you have a place to serve. And I took my mind off the pain and I continued to serve. Today, 
If I want to ride in two cars at the same time, it's not possible. <laughs> what I'm simply saying is, you might be going through difficulty now, but our God is a faithful God. It's a faithful God. Weeping me endure for a night, but joy cometh when? In the morning. I'd like to round off because of time. Please give me the scriptures on the screen I requested from the media. Romans chapter 8. Thank you, blessed Father. You know, the Bible says, hope deferred makes the heart to be sick. And so many times when people are waiting for the Lord, their hope that is deferred sometimes makes them sick. I'm going to get, get off the screen so that you can see the entire screen. The Bible says in the book of Romans in chapter 8 in the King James, he says, for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wait the redemption of our body. I want you to look at that scripture in the New Living Translation so that you can have a better understanding. He said, we know that all creation, the whole world, has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. He said, we believers also are groaning. We believers also are groaning. He said, even though we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory, he said, for we long for our bodies to be released from sin, from suffering, from captivity, from pain. We too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full rights as his adopted children. I don't know who is waiting with eager hope for the day that God will give you your full right as a child of God. After this message, that right will come. I said that right will come. Now, the Bible says in the verse 22 here, he said the whole world is groaning. And he went on in verse 23 that we also, we are groaning. And you begin to wonder, why is the world groaning and why am I groaning also? Why are children of God groaning? The message version, we explain it to us. The Bible says, all around us we observe a pregnant creation. Pregnant creation. The difficult times of pain throughout the world are simply bad pangs. He said, but it is not only around us, it's within us. The Spirit of God is arousing us within. We are also feeling the bad pangs. He said, these sterile and barren bodies of ours are yearning for full deliverance. Look at verse 24. He said, that is why waiting does not diminish us any more than waiting diminishes a pregnant mother. We are enlarged in the waiting room. We, of course, don't see what is enlarging us. But the longer we wait, the larger we become. And the more joyful our expectancy. There is somebody hearing me. A waiting mother is an expectant mother. A waiting person is going to have a miracle. I know that we have a group in the church we call them Hebrew women. And when they are going to have their meetings, they ask that we want waiting mothers, expectant mothers to come. And in their mind, they are saying that waiting mothers are those who are still trusting. They don't have it yet. And that the expectant mothers are those who are pregnant and they're about to deliver. But here, message version says <laughs> that when somebody is waiting, he's like a mother who is already pregnant, waiting for the day of delivery. For every day that she's waiting, she's been enlarged. Her tummy is getting bigger. Her stomach is getting bigger. When you are waiting in faith, you are not waiting in doubt. The seed is already planted. It's only getting, it's growing bigger. That is why I said to you, the longer you wait, the best of God comes. My father, blessed memory, told me on the farm, that sometimes you can plant yam and you can allow it to stay two years. And I said, why? Isn't it six months? He said, let's try it. And we tried it. When it was harvest time, we left some. We didn't harvest them. And we harvested some at harvest time after six months. And they look sizable. He said, leave this one so we'll see what will happen next year. And two years after, we came to harvest. And they were like times four. The size of the ones we harvested harvested before. And I said, how? He said, when you leave it in the ground, 
it will rot, it will decay, it will grow again, it gets bigger and bigger. I have good news for you. Your waiting is not in vain. That is why I want you to know that when Sarah was waiting, it was to bring forth an Isaac. Oh, that is why I want you to know when Zechariah was waiting, it's because a John the Baptist must be born. That is why I want you to know that when Manoah was waiting, it's because a Samson must be born. When Anna was waiting, it's because a Samuel must be born. It's always a better miracle than those who got it last first. That is why the Bible says God leaves the best for the last. The people around you may be calling you the last. All your contemporaries are contemporaries. They have gotten what they want, but I want you to know you are like a pregnant mother waiting for the day of delivery. You are already carrying the pregnancy. It's only getting bigger. You might not see it physically, but God says I should tell you. It's only getting bigger. It's getting enlarged. Very soon, it shall be delivery time. It shall be delivery. Stand up on your feet. Thank you, Jesus. I trust the Lord this morning that your waiting will not be in vain. When we take that song we started with, Oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies Unto thee, O oh Lord, do, do I lift up, up my soul? Oh, yes. Unto thee, O oh Lord, do, do I lift up my soul? Oh, for something. Everyone is always waiting for something. Some might be waiting for their documents. Just this last week, somebody shared a great testimony. They've been waiting for their immigration documents. And God, God, after a long wait, pleasantly surprised them. They just got it in the mail. Ah, please, please, I don't know what you have been waiting for. Five years, six years, three years, ten years. I don't know what you have been waiting for. And you are thinking, when will it come? I want you to know, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh when? In the morning. Don't lose faith. Don't give up hope. Just know that as long as you are waiting, and you are waiting in Him, it's because the best of God is being prepared for you. Pray this up this morning that the very best of the most high shall be yours in the name of Jesus. I want you to bow down your heads, everybody. You are here this morning, and there's something you are waiting on God for. It could be healing, it could be deliverance, it could be fruitfulness, it could be prosperity. Whatever it is you are waiting on God for, just lift up your two hands to heaven. To say, Lord, I am waiting on you. I am waiting on you. And there are some of you that have been waiting now for more than three years. Does it matter how long you have been waiting? A time comes that God proves your faith and steps in. Lord, I am praying over these hands that are lifted. Whatever it is that they're waiting on you for, I pray that this morning, that the visitation of heaven that brings an end to their waiting and satisfies their longing soul. Let that visitation come in the name of Jesus. Visit them in their homes. Visit them in their marriages. Visit them in their ministries. Visit them in their businesses. I see somebody who has been waiting for marriage. You are marrying a pastor. I see somebody who has been waiting for the fruit of the womb. That child shall be special unto God. 
I see somebody waiting for a deliverance, even from poverty. Your breakthrough will make you to be a lender to nations in the name of Jesus. When your time of waiting comes to an end, there will be joy all around you in the name of Jesus. The whole earth is waiting. And they are groaning for the manifestations of the sons of God. And the sons of God are also groaning. Why? Because there is a pregnancy we carry. And we are looking forward to the day of delivery. I announce to you, this month shall be your month of delivery in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. Thank you, King of glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let's lift up our voices and just bless the Lord for that.